Next, we can move on to the next item here. Once you save it, let's move on to ramps for students. To explain, essentially ramps ramps are very very similar to uh, to staircases, except ramps have got no rises. They do not rise in a in a staggered manner. It rises in a very smooth, continuous manner. All right, and uh, the building control regulations, uh, certain controls are uh, the gradient is being controlled. All right. So the highest inclination you can go in a building context is 1 is to 12. So what is 1 is to 12 supposed to mean? It means every 1 meter increment you have 1 meter, all right, it will equate to us having a 12 meter run distance this way. That is what the 1 is to 12 gradient means that is the maximum allowable you can go minimum you can go 1 is to 200 except uh, it will take you forever 10,000 miles to reach the next floor but um, just to give you a clear idea let's start by drawing okay let's start by drawing a, a gradient a ramp first now start by looking at the first story we want to draw up a ramp to go from the first story to the second story. Now the floor to floor height in this particular exercise here is 3.15 meters. So if you calculate 3.15 meters multiply by 12 meters, you are going to need a ramp of about 37.8 meters to reach the top. Okay. Uh, building control regulation also stipulates that you you must have a break okay now you think along the lines one fine day right you, you suffer a, okay touch wood lah, huh? you suffer a, a little bit of accident you sprain your ankle so for the next few days you cannot walk you have to go up one floor which is 3.15 meters tall and uh, Somehow the ramp that was being designed is all the way 37 meters worth of continuous gliding. Eh? So you will go up like that. Okay. Like my design concept is spiral. So it will spiral up all the way like that. So 37 meters means you go a couple of rounds non-stop. Okay. And uh, because we are on wheelchairs, we use our hands to move. And the thing about this is if it is continuous, that means we glide in an inclined manner for 37 solid meters. Alright, old man like me will glide nearly 40 meters of continuous rowing. My hands will get a cramp and then I cannot hold on to that wheelchair anymore. After a while, I'm going to glide backwards. I can't even stop it so I'll roll backwards. And the consequence would be, instead of suffering or trying to recover from a, 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 a sprained ankle, I will probably suffer a total paralysis from neck down because of a flip wheelchair and I break my neck. So, and I end up being a, a complete quadriplegic that way. So no, okay. So in reality, the control is again set at every 12 meter run. Every 12 meter run, you must have a landing so therefore it is built into Revit okay or you must understand using Revit forces you to recognize or or learn about certain building control regulations properly so because it involves you modeling out the real thing and it forces you to remember these values by heart all right so if you click on edit type again um, if you go to ramp again right inside ramp uh, it's under here architecture ramp and if you click on edit type right down here is there something you want to pay attention to under the maximum inclined length it is by default set to 12 meters uh, i set it to 12 meters because it's, a, it's simply a building control 
is a regulation. You can obviously have it shorter than 12 meters, but never longer. So the problem is, uh, okay, once we have this, but the, but John, the, the ramp I need is 37 meters. So what happens? That means we are going to need to have landings. So that the poor, the poor chap on the wheelchair, after he rolls continuously for 12 meters, he's trying to catch his breath, he can stop on a horizontal platform that doesn't roll backwards or forward. That he can stay stable there and catch his breath before he embarks on the next 12 meter journey again. So that's the reason why. All right. I hope in your final year project, if your project has to involve yourself with a ram of some sort, you give it some thought on that. All right. So to create is again very straightforward. We click on one direction. The thing about this, the thing good about having Revit is, Revit tells you, hey, how much of the ramp is being created. Let's say your maximum incline, you can click very far away. It doesn't really matter because that's all you can create. You can only create so long, 12 meters only. And then Revit will tell you, look at this, huh? Revit will inform you 12 meters of incline ramp is being created. There's another 25.8 meters remaining. So what's going to happen is we are going to have to keep clicking on that. And then there. Okay. Notice here, something has been created in between. This is the landing portion here. This is the landing. Next, because it's too long, okay, we have to do a U-turn. Eh? So we will U-turn it back. And then Revit creates that U-turn for you as a landing. And then after that, we will just create the long one. And if you look at this now, okay, Revit will inform you here, 37.8 meters of inclined ramp is created already. So that means you've reached the second story. Before we finish though, we change the base offset to no to zero to zero here. And again, like a staircase, staircase only point up. We only document locally pointing up. So we will take away down. There's no down, that's show arrows. Alright? And then we are done. Now pay attention to this part here on width. Usually the handicap provision needs to be bigger. The poor person sitting on that wheelchair there no longer is based on his ergonomics but it's based on the sizing of his wheelchair. So therefore he's going to need a bit more space. So it will be only prudent to set it to about 1.2 meters so he has some room to maneuver at that. But again not too wide to the point he cannot hold the handrails at, at some point. Eh? So something for you to think about. Okay, And finish. Now let's take a look at it in 3D view. You'll find that to reach one floor, you are going to need to have a facility that huge. Okay, that long in order to provide for this. Okay. So this is how we can create this, this RAM. Now similarly, we will also be able to make changes to this RAM by clicking on the ramp itself and edit sketch. We can make changes by altering the design of the landing, let's say. So we can keep it to a minimum, let's say at one meter gap. So we can make changes to this by keying in one meter, okay? And then changing this distance again to, to moving it to 12 meters or so. So what I'm going to do is I will just use model line to set a reference so that I can later snap it easily. So I'll make a move to this to 1 meter and I'll just stretch this one out here. And then I will edit the sketch again and to move this portion inside to 
snap here so we can make a change to that Okay. So in general, this is how RAMs are being um, created and calculated inside as well. <coughs> now, sometimes there may be a need to design something. Like for example, you want to make a change to the profile of this RAM and it no longer becomes a straight RAM or something. This part here can be made to a change. Huh? Like for example, Along this ramp itself, you can begin to then create a, a port, a feature. Not too sure what this is about, but maybe in your spatial creation, you want to have uh, this ramp that you can, you know, halfway through the ramp, then you can go into a space somewhat for a rest or for a break or something. Or um, like, like Chinatown Point. Have you guys ever been to that shopping center? It's called Chinatown Point. If you haven't been there, go take a look. Um, the whole the whole mall itself is designed in such a way that the whole thing is a spiral. So the shops are all built along that spiral itself. So the the whole idea of trying to create a seamless uh, seamless shopping experience of which this whole thing will just keep going on and on. All right, that one. So you can still make some change to this part here. <coughs> 